Newly released video shows the moment Russian fighter jets made a mid-air encounter with a U.S. drone. Take a look at this. Part of the 42nd second, 42 second clip shows the aircraft spraying the drone with what the Pentagon says is jet fuel. It was then brought down due to the damage. This happened over the Black Sea two days ago. So joining us now, retired Colonel Daniel Davis. Colonel Davis, thank you so much for your time here. This video appears to show the Russian jets flying quite aggressively. Is Russia trying to provoke a U.S. response? I'm, I don't know since they're trying to provoke a response so much as they are to, to try to communicate that they're not going to allow the U.S. to operate on their borders uh, with impunity any longer. These have been going on, as, as I think Kirby has said, uh, routinely. And, and of course, these, these uh, platforms are specifically in the air to gain intelligence on the Russians so that the Ukrainian side can use it to destroy the Russian forces. And I think the Russians are finally saying, hey, we're not going to let that happen, just you know, unimpeded anymore. And it really remains to be seen just exactly what's going to happen now. Was this just a one-off kind of situation, or was it the start of many? And I think that's going to really uh, be important to be watching and here in just the coming days. Well, Colonel, would you say, is this a sign Russia's trying to take control of the Black Sea? Well, I, I don't know that they're trying to take control of the Black Sea, but they are trying to take control of the airspace uh, around their borders, especially when it were aircraft uh, drones like this are flying that work to their disadvantage and, and help their troops to be killed. And, uh, you know, it's been going on for the whole year. And I've uh, frankly been a little surprised that Russia has been completely passive about it. Uh, but it, it does appear that they may be saying we're no longer going to be passive. And that's one of the things that concerns me is the potential for this to expand beyond the borders of Ukraine. And that's something that we need to make absolutely certain does not happen. Well, speaking of that potential expansion, uh, the Pentagon has not announced any type of retaliation at this point. But but should we be doing something? Is inaction a sign of weakness or is inaction really the smartest move? Look, the problem is that, that we kind of put ourselves in a situation to, to have to face that kind of dilemma that you're talking about there, because we've been probably, it didn't start off this way, but the more we did it, the more we did see a response, and we kept going more, more frequent, closer to the border. This was only about 36 miles from the Sevastopol uh, Black Sea headquarters of the, of the Russian Navy, and, and it looks like that might have finally been, you know, a red line for them. What we don't want to do is to, you know, take military action and actually ex exacerbate the situation to where it could become an armed clash between the two sides. And then everything bad is possible after that. Yeah, very precarious. Uh, last question for you, Colonel. Uh, Kirby says that the wreckage is, is in very deep water. It's likely gone or it's likely damaged. But what does that mean as far as the recovery? Are we still trying to recover whatever may still be out there? Well, according to the Pentagon, we have, and according to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Milley, we are still trying. He said we have lots of friends in the area, even though the U.S. ships are loud in the Black Sea right now. Uh, but reports earlier today were that a number, I think up to 20 Russian ships were in seen in the area, apparently looking for that wreckage. And you can imagine that would be a big prize for them. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.